I woke um, this morning um, into the light, daylight, mm, concerned, puzzled, flat, um, couldn't say it was because of a dream, I can't remember what the dream was, except I think I was dreaming, but you know, it wasn't something that's marked on my mind as terribly bad, except that I've not come out with the same happiness this morning. And so I wondered if it was because I fell asleep listening to um, not this recording, but part A, not part B, the recording that I've got numbered just before. And uh, I thought, well, perhaps it's something about the recording. But what we need to be saying is, I'm being presented with a difficulty. My Heavenly Father is therefore, I gather, teaching me something. What is it, Lord? Let me put my mind to it. I tried the usual. I thought, well, I'll go through some things that are good and lovely about yesterday. And from there I got to thinking, well, perhaps I should listen to that recording again, see if it took me into a wrong place in sleep. This recording, in effect, you know, part, the first part of this, 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 is a, this is now the third part I'm giving here. But a stronger approach is to look at the difficulty itself and say, Thank you, God, for this difficulty, in this case, some sort of alienation, some sort of flatness. This um, not joy and peace and uh, hope and optimism. What are you teaching me, Lord? Perhaps I can find out by going through that recording that I fell asleep on. Uh, you know, part B of this um, set of what it looks to be it. A, B, C at the minute. Well, let me try this. I think it's the extreme version of you know, what sort of good and lovely think on these things. But when you're presented with something that isn't, if you include that in what you're being thankful for, in fact, if you hone in on it and say, I'm thankful for this state that's not delightful to me, What are you teaching me, Lord? Thank you for it. I don't understand, and I thank you that I don't understand. What's likely to lead me to hearing you and cottoning on to what you are presenting in this lesson? And now, you see, I'm beginning to be filled with optimism and hope because I'm thinking the problem itself is also evidence of the goodness of God. He's teaching me something. Oh, that's good. What is it? He's teaching me and reminding me. You do have a solution to this. It's not necessarily focusing just on the good and the lovely, but 
focus on being thankful for the difficulty. And that's where the real miracle comes. I mean astonishing miracles. When the difficulty becomes transformed, you recognize that it's a blessing. When you see the difficulty as a blessing, my goodness, you're now happy about it. And you're working the difficulty to the full as regards goodness and modifying yourself. So the modification I'm bringing at the minute is to remind me there's great benefit in thanking God for difficulties. And perhaps you're, perhaps that's your next stage, Marshall. Not to be overcome and deflated by the difficulties, but to see them as hope, as engines for your movement towards, in this case, greater freedom in the mind of God. There's something that's pressing you to understand and see what can be improved in yourself. For you see, I am now at this moment in a, an optimism about the problem, instead of in pessimism and deflation, I'm full of life again. The difficulty itself is towards life, because God has allowed it. He allows it to present as, if you like, evil, a problem. Our child response is, well, I don't want problems, I don't want problems, or, or uh, 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 I don't want problems. And that's good, but the way to get rid of the problem is to remember that God rules all things, including this deflation and the problem. And he's a loving God, it's for a blessing. Oh, oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> do you say to me? And you start to see then what is the blessing of this? Oh, well, the blessing of this one, this particular one this morning, and my, that I found on waking, is that it reminds me, when you do get a, what seems to be bad, a problem, to thank God for the problem. Not just to distract yourself from it onto all that has been good. to thank him for the problem. It's part of the teaching, it's part of the learning. Oh, well, I want to do it well then. Show me, Lord, what you're teaching me. Now, I had a problem without explanation as to what the goodness purpose is. And that in itself is a reminder when you get such a situation, thank me for it, trust me for it by thanking me for it. And deal with it in thankfulness. Look for what the problem may be blessing you with. It's a, this one is, was blessing me with, I didn't have an explanation for it. Ah, well, the solution then is to thank God for the problem. And that, in its 
itself is a reminder, a lesson, and the way to deal with it, of course. And you may find it gives something profound, like you realize, yes, when I thank God for the difficulties, I get almost a miraculous release from them. More so than attempting to simply put my mind on something else and say, thank you, it's a sunny day, Lord. Or thank you, it's a new day. I can do it that way. But I'm not advancing in the way that God is giving me opportunity if I do. I can get more by thanking God for the problem, looking to see the good side of the problem, of course, and thanking Him meticulously for the presented bad side. Become extremely accepting then, you see, of what God is putting in your life, and yet alive to how it's modifying your life. Trusting that God is modifying it to good. So thanking God for the difficulty when you're in it raises your optimism, hope, happiness, joy, relief, peace, and of course makes you open to now being sensitive to what is the benefit, Lord, I'm looking out for it, I'm working with it. Do you see you're going to you're much more likely to get uh, the benefit of the lesson now, aren't you? And if you simply change it, Lord, change it, Lord, or, oh, I don't know where it is and I, I can't even talk to you about it, and, oh, I'm going to look the other way, what a nice sunny day it is. Perhaps I'll have a nice breakfast. Uh, you know, I mean, we're not running from it. We're thanking God for it because we're trusting God. And it is our trust in God that is our very source and foundation of peace and happiness and hope and joy. In other words, every difficulty can power me into the arms and realization of the fullness of God. Every difficulty is as much a blessing as every obvious blessing is sometimes staggeringly more, and all sorts of miraculous consequences start to happen in your life. Why? Because it's very easy to trust God on a sunny day, when everything's going well, so to speak. But when you trust God in the difficulties, my goodness, you are trusting and trust is what the relationship is built on. Trust. Your relationship with God is one of trust. How do you build it? Mm, well, when I get difficulties, I, I exercise trust and it grows and strengthens. I thank Him for the difficulty. because my whole being wants to believe that he loves me and that he's all powerful, that he's my wonderful dad. And I do it all the more when I'm in difficulty. Ah, oh, how marvelous. Don't need to give you much difficulty then. You now strengthen your your love and your trust, even with the most minor difficulty, instead of shelving it and avoiding it and, uh, and dodging it, and remaining just with the trust level that you had. Or gradually less it's being dissipated away by perhaps pointless pursuits, who knows. 
But you see, we trust in our God that he's wonderful, loves us, and we love him to bits. And we live accordingly. So every difficulty, even the minor ones, give us tremendous fuel for increasing our trust. Wow. Thank you, Dad. And so it is then that this difficulty has opened more of my being into the mind of God. I'm adjusted accordingly and more in harmony with his very self. How wonderful. Thank you, Dad. Well, of course, you say to me, well, you knew this already. You're a great reader of Merlin Crothers, weren't you? You might not be reading it at the minute, but, I mean, you have been. Well, good. It's been a great reminder then, hasn't it? <laughs> I obviously needed the reminder. I had actually been reading uh, some of my notes of ten years, 12 years ago, and uh, there's a few difficulties I was coping with, and, and I actually went to bed last night with this background of review for about half an hour or an hour of these notes of mine. And so I was not uplifted, and that's probably why I went into a sleep that ultimately... I woke up once or twice during the night, of course, but ultimately gave um, a depressed state this morning. And I was allowed to do that. Thank you, God. And it's been a great blessing. Thank you, Dad. Yes, I used to be a bit of a fanatic on Merlin Carruthers' ministry. Um, you know, ordered his books from uh, um, Escondido, California. And uh, he's dead now, but I'm sure his ministry is still going. Um, and it was, especially by the book, Prison to Praise. And um, basic drift was that um, we thank God for all things. He's a perfect God and he loves us. So the difficulty comes along, you say, thank you, God, I trust you for this. And every time it troubles you, you say, thank you, God, I trust you for this. You're blessing me, I'm going to trust you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And, you know, you might have to say that a hundred times in a day with a real severe problem. And you find miracles. <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. Don't get me wrong, I don't have the same theology as Merlin Crothers. I'm not an um, evangel fundamentalist. Um, I'm not, you know, aligned to any um, particular um, group. Uh, um, I, I find blessing and benefit from just about every group I ever go to. And I go to a great variety and I, I never... I think I almost never reject um, checking something out and, and seeing what is of worth there, of course. But that's not the point that I'm trying to make here. The point I'm making here is, if you get hold of that book, don't be um, dissuaded by the theology that's perhaps not yours. Run with the miracles and... Uh, I mean, there were follow-up books, Answers to Praise, um, Praise Works, and Heaven into Hell, and, oh, I don't know what else. There's a whole series of books, but um, they refer much to the miracles of um, that happened in consequence of this approach of thanking God for the difficulties. Yeah, because, of course, it builds trust and hope in God, and Gosh, you have a relationship. That's what relationships are. The degree of trust. 
you know, once you lose trust in your partner, oh goodness, the marriage is going to collapse, isn't it? Dear, oh dear. Unless you can recover that trust. And, well, there are ways of doing it. And actually thanking God for the difficulty does recover the trust. But you know, ultimately, our trust is not in others. It's in God. Other children like ourselves can't, you know, bring in the reward you anticipate for trusting them. We're children. We, doesn't mean we don't put our trust in others, but our real trust is in God. We expect others to um, have as bad or a worse record than ourselves. <laughs> but we still love them. And we're able to love them because our trust in God is so great that every difficulty, you know, the wife leaves you, um, the kids don't talk to you for in years or something. It's for a blessing. Why do you think a loving God has allowed this to someone he loves, namely you? Accept it be for a blessing. And when it troubles you, you thank God for it. You say, thank you, God. I remind myself that my trust is in you. You are my God and I love you. And you love me. And this is a blessing whether I understand it or not, I can certainly, certainly trust you for it. It is my desire, my purpose, my will. You are my love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind and strength. Why? Because it's the most blessed way to go. <laughs> Pure self-interest. Yeah. But it becomes a wonderful selflessness too in the end. It just does. Thank you, Dad. So you see, what was my reward? A lovely recording. This third one of the series, which I, I don't think I have called C, but anyway, it's following A, a and B of the previous two numbers. And, um... And I'm flying. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Dad.